Jai Sri Radhe, Jai Sri Radhe. So here we are, we're having another fireside chat. The, it's been actually quite difficult. The, uh, there's so much noise to find a quiet time when there's no external noise barging in. It's very, very difficult like these days because it's Julan here in Vrindavan. I wanted to, I want to go on with this series and uh, a, a discussion of Manak Shikshan. It may, might take quite some time because I've that's the way I am. And these damn videos can't be longer than maximum 20 minutes because uh, otherwise uploading onto the internet is, is a tremendously uh, lengthy process. It seems it gets exponentially longer the bigger the document is. So <clears throat> at, in the Manak Shiksha, we've been discussing the second verse and I've been going on on some uh, at some length about the nadharmam nadharmam portion and I think this is important to to step you know in the beginning of uh, one of the verses <clears throat> we've been looking at prema pattanam which has a fairly sizable you know eight or ten well, I'm not quite sure I didn't count how many verses uh, of different pramanas where he he said looking at this dharma and adharma from different directions and now he's he's discussed uh, the external part like the sarva dharma and parityaja idea that all these verses are, are quite most of them are familiar and and uh, well-known verses the gopis in the ras lila and uh, now he's come to four verses or five verses here that are, first of all, yeah, four verses. The first two are from Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. So now I just think that today, if I have the time to just, I would like to go through these because I'm, uh, I think that they're, they're nice, they're relishable, and uh, are worthy of, um, of relishing. What's important here is that this is, from a historical point of view, Rasigo Tangsa is quoting Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. So now he's a Gaudiya Vaishnava who offers prayers to Mahaprabhu in the first instance. But there's no doubt whatsoever that up until the 18th century, Rasigo Tangsa is post Vishwanath Chakravarti, so he's mid 18th century. And um, still at that time, in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, there was some connection to the Radha Vallava Sampradaya. So uh, these crossword influences are there. So let's just see what he says from the Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, verses 80 and 81. The Kaisho Rad Bhuta Madhuri Bharadhuri Nanga Chaving Radhikam Premo Lasa Bharadhikam Niravadi Dhyayanti Tadhya Tyakta Karma Bhiratma Naiva Bhagavad Dharma Pyaho Nirmama Sarva Ascharya Gatim Gata Rasa Nain Te Bhyo Mahad Bhyo Mahat. So already I've been talking about this, this Mahad Bhyo Mahat. This is an exceptional verse in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi that he's paying obeisances to Radha or Krishna. So uh, he's paying his obeisances to the devotee. But which devotee is the devotee who is always meditating on Radha? Which Radha that Radha is? and whose form, whose beauty, is the very summit of all sweetness, of all amazing sweetness of youthful beauty. Radharani should be seen as the form, ideal form of beauty, a feminine beauty. Premo Las Bharadikam, the enthusiasm, the ulas, ulas means that which is springing up from within. The ulas, the premo las, the ulas of prema, 
when you feel love, love is characterized by a springing up of attraction, of absolute attraction to the other person. So here's Radha, she says that premo lasa bharadikam, that it's adhika. So often they like to rhyme radhika with adhika. So premo bharadika, to get that little bit of rhyme. That she's greater than, she's more than, or she possesses a greater quantity thereof. She possesses a greater quantity than you can imagine. Radharani is prema. You can imagine prema from your own experience. But since Radharani is the fountainhead of all prema, whatever prema you experience is only a mere shadow reflection of what Radharani has. So therefore she's prema olasa varadikam. She's in excess of whatever you can imagine. So those devotees who niravadi dhyayanti, that, so that radha, those who with that consciousness, with that awareness, that full direct perception of Radharani's nature. Radharani is Mahabhava Swarupini, a devotee who meditates on her constantly becomes tadakara karika. His mind becomes, her mind becomes one with the mind of Radha. And not just to say the mind of Radha, here we mean the entire inner being of Radha. The Manjari is one with Radha, Tanmaya. So one who is engaged in the sadhana of Radha Bhav <clears throat> has to cultivate the sense of oneness with Radha, which requires an act of the imagination. People think that when you're using your imagination, that means automatically it's false. But actually imagination is the source of all creativity. So in this particular case, one's creativity is the natural response to the inner impulse of, that arises out of the experience and the consequent faith of actually experiencing prema, even in its reflected form by which it becomes possible to imagine the reality and thereby to experience it in ever profounder realms because the imagination and the reality become one in meditation. At any rate, that's the process, my friends. So, Dhyayanti Yetadhyaya, so those who meditate on Radrani in this awareness, in this consciousness, uh, in the resulting from this experience, They, what? Tyaktah karmavira. Atmana. So this, uh, Atmanaiva. Bhagavad dharme pyaho nirmama. So this line is a little, can be read in different ways, which is one of Sanskrit's, uh, Sanskrit poets, Sanskrit writers, Sometimes they don't want to be too direct. Sometimes they like to have those multiplicity of meanings because the multiplicity of meanings requires what? It means that you have to process those different meanings. When you process those different meanings, uh, you uh, undertake the process. It's called mananam. And what that does, it means that you churn your understanding of the Leela and of Prema in that way. 
So here the double meaning is this, that on the one hand it says So he is renounced by karmas. Hmm? That uh, the karmas leave him. In other words, prarabdhati karma. All the different uh, karma entanglements, those abandon the sadhaka. Here it means that it's not by particular effort, but it's the karmas that do it themselves. What I'm giving here is the meaning that I prefer. Because uh, the commentator here does it a little differently. Because atmana would mean that there is an effort involved by the self. Just like in the Gita, atmaiva hyatmano bandur atmaiva ripur atmana udhareda atmana atmanam natmanam avasadayet atmaiva bandurayva atmana atmana and so on. Udhareda atmana atmanam atmanam avasadayet. Effort is involved. You lift the self by the self. You don't let yourself act as an enemy, but you make the self act as a friend. You bring the friend, you, you like a friend, you, you, you uh, bring the mind, just like we're doing here with Raghunath Das Goswami, you bring the mind, you charm the mind, you bring the mind, your friend, you, you, you sweet talk the mind into its own self-interest, which is to be constantly fixed on Prem, on the Divine Reality. I started too late. There's already sound coming. Anyway, we'll be getting... So now the, the, the conclusion here is that... So then he says next, Atmana Bhagavad Dharmye Pyaho Nirmama so nirmama means cruel. It means indifferent. So the Bhagavad Dharmas here, all the Bhagavad Dharmas that are talked about in the Bhagavatam, the Chosakti Anga, the 64 Angas of Vidhi Bhakti, and even to the extent that Bhagavad Dharma includes Varnashram Dharma. But he's going beyond Varnashram Dharma here. He says the Bhagavad Dharmas themselves fall apart, fall away when there is raga. When the when the when one comes to the point of attachment to meditating on the essence, on the essential aspect of bhakti, which is prema. When the externals fall away and one seizes in samadhi, the essence of prema bhakti, then external formalities, rules, the vidis, all these things fall away. Viramita nicha dharma dhyana adi yatnam jayati jayati nama ananda rupam murare viramita nicha dharma dhyana puja adi yatnam Katamapi sakridatam muktidam praninayat paramam amritam ekam jivanam bhushanam me. So it happens in connection with the holy name. Because basically what is being spoken of is that meditation or concentration or direct experience of the holy name and the direct experience of prema are one and the same thing. Is it just a question of uncovering the layers and experiencing the, ho the holy name as it is, as the divine couple themselves, as the embodiment of Prem? So the holy name being non-different is the embodiment of Prem itself. Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. So here he says, Bhagavad Dharma Pya Nirmama. Nirmama means cruel, hard. You say, you've got to do this. You say, I don't care. The Bhagavad Dharmas come with their hands folded and says, do this because that's the rule. 
And you say, I'm too busy. I'm meditating on Radha and Krishna. So then, he concludes what? Ah. It's the wrong season to be doing this. But anyway, actually, Okay, I'm going to finish it up. I'd like to move on. Anyway, I can't concentrate with the noise. So I'm going to just finish up here. I'll say, Sarvascharya gatin gata rasamayin te bhyo mahadbhyo namaha. So he says that they have gone to the supreme destination, the rasamaya destination, the Sarvascharya gatin. Uh, with the word Ascharya, Adbhut, these things, these words are very much loved by Prabhupada Saraswati. I'm sorry, my all obeisance is the Radhavala Sampradaya. This is Prabhupada Saraswati's writing. This is not Hari Vamsha. This is Prabhupada Saraswati paying obeisances to Hari Vamsha. Which is also glorious. If it's not, if it's Hari, if it's Hari Vamsha himself, then he's paying his obeisances to Prabhupada. That's the way I feel about it. So the Ascharya Gatim, Sarva Ascharya Gatim, Rasa Mayim, that's Radha. The, she is the ultimate, most Ascharya Rasa Maya Go. And that's what we're talking about here. So now in the next one, he goes on to explain this. Now this is again, as I said, from the Radha Rasa Sudha, these are unusual verses. But you'll see that Prabodhananda Saraswati does exactly the same thing in Vrindavana Mahimamrita. So I'm going to do this verse also. Because I have to get this done, right? No, there's too much noise. Okay, so we did that one verse. I have to do it earlier or later. I gotta find a time when there's no noise. No, there's always noise. <laughs> 